Well, hi, my name is Joel Graff, and this video demos a shader development environment that I've been working on for the last couple months. Uh, it's written in Visual C++, and it employs the Open Scene Graph API to manage the 3D environment. On your left, you have the rendering window where all of our geometry and shader effects and whatnot appear. And on the right, you have the console window where the user interface is, where the interaction takes place. Now, at the top, you see a prompt that says Scene Root. What that means is that the root node of my scene graph is my currently active node, uh, so that any commands that get issued then are issued within the context of that node. I'll talk about a bit about what that means here in a second. Uh, first, what we're going to do is we're going to list the structure of my scene graph, and we see that there is in fact only one node, my scene root node, and that it's a group node. Now, I'm going to add a group node to my scene to my scene root, and we'll call it level one. I'll select that node that we just added. And I'm going to add to that a group node called sublevel one. And I'll select sublevel one. And now I'll give ourselves something to look at. We'll import cow.osg to a node called cow one. And this is a model that comes standard with the Open Scene Graph API. There it is, the OSG cow. Uh, and you see that it's rendered right now in silhouette. Uh, the lighting effects have been partly disabled because uh, of because they're fixed function and and we're dealing with a programmable pipeline right now, which uh, requires us to disable the fixed function a little bit. It's not going to cause us any problems for what we're trying to do here though. Um, anyway, I'd like to add a couple more cows to my scene and I can go about that in one of two ways. I could import cow.osg two more times or I could select the cow node that we did create and I could copy it to cow2 and copy it again to cow3. What this does is it creates two sibling nodes for cow1 uh, in other words, they all have the same parent, which is sublevel one. And the difference between this and importing cow.osg two more times is that when you import a file, you bring in the vertex data that defines the model. Uh, whereas when you copy a node from one node to another, you copy the node structure, you copy the OpenGL state, but you don't copy that vertex data. Uh, all the other nodes just point back to that original node's vertex data. By doing that, I can create a hundred cows and yet import and yet have only one set of vertex data defining them all. Massive memory and savings in doing that. Anyway, we have three cows in our scene, but we can't see any of them. Or we only see one of them because they all occupy the same space. So let's fix that. Let's select cow 2 and translate it 10 units in the X. And I'll select cow 3 and translate that minus 10 in the X. Center and here I have three cows in a row. Now, Open Scene Graph uh, has a trackball manipulator, which is used to manipulate the camera and allow it allows you to move the camera in the scene according to your mouse movements. So, if I click and drag just a little bit, I can set those cows spinning, and I can move them around any way I like. Right now, we'll just leave them centered as they are. Now one of the nice features about the scene graph is that any transformations or state that's applied to a particular node are also inherited by the children nodes. Uh, to give you an example of what I mean, let's select sublevel 1 and copy it to sublevel 2 and then copy it again to sublevel 3. Now let's list our scene graph. What's interesting is that I have sublevel 1, sublevel 2, and sublevel 3 in my scene graph. But when I copied sublevel 1 to 2 and 3, it not only copied that node, but it copied all the children nodes, the three cow nodes underneath it to 2 and 3. So now instead of three cows in my model, I have nine. But again, we can't see all nine because they occupy the same space. So we'll select sublevel 2, and we'll translate that 10 units in the Z, and we'll select sublevel 3. And we'll translate that minus 10 in the Z. And now we have an array of nine cows. Now let's select level one, which is our top level node, and copy that to level two. Copy again to level three, and then we'll select level two and translate that 10 units in the Y. Oh, misspell translate. Uh, 10 units in the Y. There we go. And we'll select level 3. And translate that. Minus 10 in the Y. There we go. And not surprisingly, we now have a cube of 27 cows. 
all of them rendered on one set of vertex data. Now, for a finishing move, let's select, let's go back to level one. And let's rotate our level one node on the x-axis 180 degrees. And the end result is that the middle layer of nine cows is now flipped upside down. Why? Because all nine cows are direct children of our level one node. Anyway, this ability for uh, parent nodes to pass on their state and transformation to all their child nodes is a fairly powerful feature of a scene graph, and it comes in handy uh, in shader development. And I'll get into that in my next video.